Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Again, we're on the series of Gematrias. Uh, this is the 14th lecture. And today we're on the number 12. Um, the um, number 12 in the Ivrit is Ashtay Aser. Again, two different words. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. So number 12 is a number of maximal differentiation. It is the number of lines that border a cube and according to our rabbis, all reality. The fact that 12 lines are all connected and in the center is the 13th. 13 is the number that bonds multiplicity into oneness. An example would be there are 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of uh, Yaakov, that are bound, bounded into their father Yaakov. Yaakov is the 13th. So the number 12 never stands alone. It is always associated with a 13th. We refer to the 12 tribes of Israel, but in reality there are 13, the tribe of Levi. Now also every list of the 12 tribes contains exactly 12 names, yet when one looks carefully, one always sees that they are always the sons of Israel, B'nai Israel. So you have the B'nai, which are 12, and then Israel, which is the 13th. There are 12 lunar months, and seven out of every 19 years we have a leap year, where we add a 13th month. The last of the six words of the Shema is the word Echod. The word Echod, meaning one, is spelled in Aleph, which has numerical value of one, Chet, numerical value of eight, and Dalid, four, 13. Together the letters Chet and Dalid, four and eight or 12, representing the 12 tribes. They combine with their father Israel, represented here by the Aleph, one, in their proclamation. Also, the God is one. The twelve sons combine with their father to manifest the unity of Echod. Again, numerical value of 13, oneness. There are six words in the first line of the Shema and, and six words in the second line of Baruch Shem that we say quietly. Again, twelve. There are twelve signs of the Zodiac. 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night. There's also called Shah's Manios, where we break up the hours of daylight into 12 equal parts. So in the winter, it may be as short as 45 minutes, and in the summer, as long as 75. But again, 12. There are 12 months in the solar year. There are 12 permutations of the letters of the divine name of mercy. There are 12 stones in the Choshen Mishpat, the breastplate, that was worn by the high priest. He also had two shohem stones on his shoulders, on which were engraved the names of the twelve tribes. When Yaakov was on his way to Haran, when he left his father's house to go to find a bride, he spent the night on the Temple Mount. When he went to sleep, he placed twelve stones around his head, formed a cape. And when he awoke in the morning, they all joined together to form one stone. That stone was used by God as one of the stones on which he placed the first set of the Ten Commandments. Again, them coming together, a form of octus, of unity. Eliyahu Anabi, Elijah the, the prophet, used 12 stones to build an altar to, to God on Mount Carmel when he had his contest, contest against the 400 prophets of the Baal, the idol worshippers. When Yeshua led the people into the land of Israel, they set up a monument of 12 stones. On the day Moshe died, he wrote one Sefer Torah, which was given to the tribe of Levi and was to be put into the Holy of Holies. The other tribes complained that they too wanted their own Sefer Torah. So miraculously, on the day he died, he wrote another 12 Sifrei Torahs for the 12 tribes. When the children of Israel crossed the sea, when they left Egypt, they did so via 12 different paths separated by towers of water. The flood lasted for 12 months. Moshe built an altar at the foot of Mount Sinai using 12 pillars that would correspond again to the 12 tribes. At Elam, there were 12 springs of water. 12 staffs were submitted by the tribal princes to affirm the role of Aaron as the high priest after Korach's rebellion. In the tragic episode of what we call the um, concubine of Giva, the corpse of the assaulted woman was cut up in 12 pieces by her husband and sent to each of the 12 tribes. The prophet Achia Shiloni tore the new garment into 12 pieces. A get, a divorce document, 
is spelled Gimel Tet. Gimel numerical value of three, and Tet, nine, has a numerical value together of 12. Interestingly enough, there are 12 lines of information written on a get. That has to be there, 12 lines. The person can only be sentenced to purgatory for 12 months, which is why we only say Kaddish for 11 months, since we say that no person is so evil that he has to be there for 12. Hypothetically, if you had someone who was that evil and you knew it, then that person, you could hypothetically say Kaddish for 12 months. The weekday Amida has 12 personal requests. The encampment of the Jews in the desert was a distance of 12 mil. The Medrash makes the following connection between the gifts of the princes that they donated when the Mishkan was dedicated. They were 12 silver dishes that corresponded to 12 constellations, 12 silver basins corresponding to the 12 solar months, 12 golden pans corresponding to the 12 lunar months, 12 oxen corresponding to the 12 tribes, 12 rams corresponding to the 12 princes, 12 he lambs corresponding to the 12 controllers of life, and 12 he goats corresponding to the 12 showbreads that were kept on the golden table in the holies. Now 12 is the age when a girl, a Jewish girl, reaches womanhood and becomes responsible for her actions, what we call a bat mitzvah. Yoshua chose 12 apostles to carry on as the leaders of Israel after his death. There are 12 minor prophets. They are Hosea, Yoel, Amos, Ovadia, Yona, Micha, Nochem, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. There are 12 notes of the chromatic musical scale which are not arbitrary. On the piano you have seven white keys and five black keys. 12. There were 12 gates in the walls of Jerusalem, three in each direction of the compass. And again, 12 showbreads on the golden tables in the holies. And just like the Hosha Mishpat was divided into four rows of stones with three stones in each row, so too, when the Jews were in the desert, they camped, they did so in groups of three in all four directions of the compass. The number 12 can be broken up into the numbers 1, and two, which together equal three. Each direction had one tribe that was the leader of these three tribes in the four directions. On the east, the tribe was Yehuda, who was the leader of that group. On the west, Ephraim. On the south, Ruvain. And on the north, the tribe of Dun. There was one God who partners with two, a man and a woman, to form a child. The number 12 in Hebrew was spelled Shte Oser, two and ten. Rivka gave birth to two sons, twins. She was originally destined to give birth to another ten, but because she complained, she only bore two. Yosef was also destined to father twelve children. However, when he was seduced by Potiphar's wife, the Medrash tells us that he was only able to control his passion by masturbating, and there were ten drops of semen that passed through his fingers. These ten drops of semen negated the ten children that he was destined to father. In actuality, Adam, first man, should have fathered twelve sons. The twelve tribes of Israel broke up into two kingdoms after the death of Shlomo and Melech. Ten followed Yerubim ben Nevat and became known as the kingdom of Israel, Malchut Yisro. And two stayed with Rehoboam, the son of Shlomo, and became Malchus Yehuda, the kingdom of Judah. The 12 tribes parallel 12 months of the year. In particular, the 12 times Rosh Chodesh, the new moon, occurs during a regular year. Now initially, the 12 new moons were to be festive days, but the Jews in the desert made the golden calf. It was taken from the men and given to the righteous women who did not participate in the sin of making the golden calf. In fact, they refused to give their gold for the eagle for the golden calf. And just like all Jewish months have their own significant events, so too do all the 12 tribes exhibit their own unique set of characteristics. Each one of the tribes was born in a different month. There are 12 gateways to heaven, and according to the Kabbalistic teachings, have their parallel in the 12 tribes. The ideal expression in the form of prayer 
is for a synagogue to be ideally constructed with 12 windows. In Misbar Kutten, in the, uh, again, when we drop the zeros, 12 becomes, as I mentioned before, 1 and 2, Aleph and Beis. Together, Aleph and Beis spell the word of, which is father. It was the face of Yaakov that saved Yosef from sinning with Potiphar's wife. Yosef has a numerical value, the name, of 156. Added together, 1, 5, and 6 is 12. He would be the one to support his father and 11 brothers, 12. His body was sunk into the Nilus, which is the Nile, which again has a numerical value of 156, 12. A meal offering would accompany a lamb sacrifice. It consisted of two-tenths of an apha of fine flour. Two-tenths, two plus ten equals twelve. Now the two-tenths of flour alluded to the first two commandments out of the ten that the children of Israel heard directly from God. The rest they heard from Moshe. In fact, it's an interesting aside that you would think that if the the word Torah would have a numerical value would be 613. Interestingly enough, the gematria, the numerical value is 611 because it says Torah Tzivalon Moshe, the Moshe taught us the Torah. He taught us 611 commandments. The first two we heard directly from God, which is the reason why the gematria of 611 works perfect. Also, the Jews had transgressed the first two commandments out of the ten by making the golden calf. So they needed repentance for that deed. With this, we've gone through not everything that is 12, but quite a bit to give you some idea how number 12 can be so important. And God willing, next week, we'll continue with the number 13. God bless. Shabbat Shalom. And again, thank you for coming.